Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another exciting episode, the final episode for this series. In this tutorial, we are going to go over how to composite all of our hard work, which is all of our rendering and bring it all together into a final composite. We have several folders and of course you can always find them if you set your project correctly under images. And here I have a beauty pass where you will see occlusion, reflections, all that fun stuff. We also have a diffuse pass and in here we're going to find um, a diffuse layer. Notice also that the title is not exactly accurate. It just, it acts up the misspelled diffuse, which is, didn't notice, I didn't catch that earlier. Um, so this is going to be my car refu uh, diffuse. And you also notice that it doesn't have an alpha map. It is actually a solid image. So something about OAVs have a tendency to remove the alpha, which is something I need to figure out. And uh, here's the shadow mat. So this looks like the shadow map looks good. Let's go ahead and make sure that this is the car shadow. Just re relabeling them. And then let's go to my specular, which is right here. Looks good. We're going to call this our car spec. All right, now it's time to import them into after effects. So here's after effects. I already have it open. I am going to start dragging these guys in here. That was one, my shadow mat. It's thinking really hard for whatever reason, probably because I'm recording. I've got my diffuse. Great, so far so good. I'm gonna to go to my beauty. Here's my occlusion. Reflection. Floor occlusion. Give me some sort of weird warning, not sure why. Um, let's see, floor reflection. Floor shadow and for the heck of it, the master layer. We also need one more image, which is in our source images. It's good to me, dragging in here. And we are ready to composite. All right, I usually double check 1024 by 684. All of them should be the same. Awesome. And then I'm gonna grab my car JPEG and drag it down. This is the original photograph. Cool, so far so good. Just to uh, take a look at some other things, we can always drag the floor shadow and bring it in. And you'll notice that because of the alpha map, it shows, it goes right on top without any type of uh, overlay. Now we can do overlay and we're gonna do a couple of things, but right now I'm just gonna start building from here. So we have our floor tiff, and then we also have floor reflection, floor occlusion, and a bunch of other cool stuff. Now, it always helps to see the diffuse first. So I'm gonna put the diffuse at the top, but then you'll notice that it doesn't have an alpha map. So for whatever reason, the AOVs, when they export, they flatten out the image, even though all the other ones and the regular render layers um, actually were fine. So whatever, it's an interesting little thing that I need to find out for. So what I need to do is actually cut the image out. So how do I do that? Well, I can actually use one that actually has an alpha map. So for example, I'm gonna double click on my car occlusion. It's gonna open up a tab here. And if I click on this, it's gonna show me that this, this in fact has an alpha. It has a black background just so there's something solid, but it really just has an alpha. So I can use this to cut out my diffuse. So I'm gonna grab my car occlusion and I'm gonna bring it up up top and I might actually wanna relabel it because I don't wanna get this confused. So this can be my car diffuse alpha. So at least I know. And then I'm gonna go over here and say alpha matte car diffuse alpha. So what it does is that it takes the above alpha map and uses it on the bottom one and now my cutout is complete. So that makes things a lot nicer. So now I have a nice uh, diffuse color on top of my object and I also have a shadow. Let's play a little bit more. Let's play with floor occlusion. I'm going to grab that floor occlusion. I'm going to put it on top of my floor shadow and my um, 
and underneath my car diffuse and you can see that it doesn't look very good because we have to multiply so let's go ahead and use our mode called multiply if you don't see multiply just click on this little toggle right here believe it or not that is a button so just click on that you should get a mode and that mode should be multiply so now we're getting some nice contact shadows at the bottom this is before and this is after so it's nice because we actually get a stronger contact shadow because otherwise we might actually start losing it and therefore it starts looking fake. But notice underneath these things, it's actually pretty strong. So we wanna make sure that we keep it there. If it's too strong, we can always go to opacity. So click on the letter T on your keyboard and just slide this to the left. The less the opacity, the less strong the color or the object will be, the shadow. The less the opacity, the less you'll see the occlusion. All right, so now we have an issue with color, right? So right now this is very blue and this is not very blue. So we're gonna need a little bit of color. So I'm gonna go layer new and I'm going to create a adjustment layer. And then over here, I'm gonna type in curves. And with curves, I can use the, make it lighter or darker, right? That's what the RGB is for. Or I can actually take the blue one and bring it in a little bit blue. Maybe it's got a little too much red, so I want to maybe reduce the red. But the problem is, is that I really just wanted to affect the shadow color and I do not need it to affect the, uh, the rest of the image. So my instincts would be like, okay, we'll just cut it out. Well, that doesn't really work. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the floor shadow and bring it to the top. So I have two floor shadows. This is the actual floor shadow. This is the adjustment layer. And I'm going to use the, the alpha channel of the shadow of the floor shadow on my adjustment layer. So I'm going to click on this and choose alpha matte. And there we go. So it's a little bit convoluted, but it gives you the effect that we want. So we have a floor, we have a adjustment layer with a curve, and then we also have the floor shadow. So I can use this as an alpha floor shadow alpha cool so now that I have this selected my goal is to try to uh, get the similar color as this it's not black and white it's always has a little bit of color and you can see up here in the RGB that when I click around you're gonna get some color so you might want to start aiming towards those values over here so I think I put in too much red so I'm gonna calm it down a little bit a little too much blue Let's see what happens if I make it a little bit less green. Might go back into my RGB and make it a little darker. And then you just kind of eyeball it using this as reference to be able to get a more, a closer color. Now, if you need to smooth your, ma um, your map, you can always blur it, but I'm happy with the results right now. And then I can just go ahead and move forward and tweak to my heart's delight. Now, you will notice that this has specularity, so it would have been smart to take another picture with no shadow information or no highlight information and then composite that in. But again, that's more advanced. And uh, so we're going to have to leave it as is. But at least we now have a pretty close color correction. There we go. We have our occlusion. It's working. We got similar colors. And now let's work on the reflection. Let's not forget about the floor reflection. Let's grab the floor reflection. Where are we? Car. Nope, that's the car. Floor reflection. Beep. And remember, it always has a little bit of reflection. Now, the issue with this is that we actually need only the reflection, not the rest of it. So I'm going to do a pretty rough mat. So this is my floor reflection. And I'm going to click on this little guy right here, which is just show me this and just kind of get a little bit it's going to be really rough. Again, if I was doing this for a profession, for example, where I was being paid, I'd be very, very picky. Um, I might even do a black and white image of this reflection so I can use it as an alpha map. But for this exercise, we'll just go ahead and just use this. If you need to manipulate your points, of course, you're more than welcome to. So once you have that set up, we are going to open up the mat or the mask and I like to feather it. So over here there is a feather so just go ahead and soften that edge. You might maybe 
something like that. Maybe you might want to um, bring the mask in a little bit more. Like so. And the whole purpose for this is, and let's move this back up. So the purpose for this is not to leave it like this. Um, the purpose for it is to actually give a little bit of color. Now, um, usually reflections are a little bit blurred, so I am going to blur it. Now we can go back and forth about which one I should use, but I always like Gaussian, so I'm going to grab Gaussian, and then I'm going to blur it. Once I have that, I can go through my modes and see which one do I want. Do I want to darken? Do I want to add? Something like this. Then with the opacity, we're just going to calm it down a little bit. Again, it's just a little bit of information. That information is here. It's a little bit hard to see, but you might want to bring it in a little bit. Might want to play with placement. Maybe you want it below the shadow, which is fine. Just remember that you want to be able to see it a little bit. So just, a, just enough information to show it. Maybe a small thing, but our eyes actually adjust to it. We will be able to recognize it. Right, moving this up, giving myself a little bit more room because it's getting a little busy here. Let's go back to our projects and move on. All right, so we have our car diffuse. And let's add some... Let's add some shadows. Let's grab the car shadow and bring it on top. That, oops, what happened? I guess I missed. All right, there it is. So you can see that we are getting some shadows, but the colors are almost reversed. So I, whoops, that's not what I wanted. So um, usually what I do with this is that the alpha mat, I mean, it's a lot easier if you use the shadow maps um, shader override because it gives you a matte a mask and then you can just kind of carve everything out and it's automatically place it on top in this one we're gonna to have to do a little bit of tweaking so let's invert um, if you type, type up here invert you can grab this invert and just flip it so now the colors are black and white you can go into multiply and we now have our shadows uh, we can decrease our shadow intensity or we can increase it so you can see that we're trying to capture this type of shadow it's a little bit more blue so I'm probably am going to have to color correct it so let's see if just plugging in a curve is gonna help let's grab a curve and attach it looks like it needs to be a little bit more blue so I'm gonna go whoa that was the wrong one maybe I should collapse invert and go to my curves blue so maybe you might want to add a little bit of blue so it's impacting the whole shadow. So just be very cautious when you use it. Maybe we need to take a little green out so we can always go. Oh, now it's turning purple. Let's see what happens when we go to red. We looks just it looks exactly like it. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so those are the type of little things you're going to have to tweak to be able to get a, lo a lot more accurate shadow. Um, it's throwing me off about the specularity. So let's grab the specularity of the car. We're going to grab the car and throw it. I'm going to throw it um, below the shadow above the car diffuse. And whoops. And in this one, we're going to use screen and screen. And I'm going to hide the car shadows because it's throwing me off. Screen is an example of uh, if anything's black, you won't see it and anything past black you will see it so you can see that we're getting our nice specularity so again I always encourage you to uh, decrease the intensity now we're starting to put things together and you're gonna notice that my car is a little bright in comparison to this and that's very concerning so that probably means that I will have to go back into Maya and re-render all of my uh, can I revisit what I had before and uh, try to um, kind of calm these colors down um, I feel like it got a little blown out somewhere along the way and I could definitely push the textures a little bit more but uh, let's see if I can actually calm it down again with some curves so I'm gonna go grab a curve and I just want to make this a little bit darker so so that's helping a little bit um, let me add a little bit of blue so again this is where the compositing aspect starts to come in it's about 
um, what what can you push in here to make it stronger? So I'm getting a little better color results, at least along here, but I'm not very happy with, I feel like I lost my red along the way. Um, and I don't have enough of a, uh, maybe a little red, just a tiny bit. Yeah, so now it's turning, not a fan. It's affecting everything. Um, so those are the type of things that you have to really visit and look and make sure that everything looks as great as it can in Maya so that it can be translated and pushed um, less in After Effects. After Effects is great, but it can only do so much. The closer it looks like the accuracy, accurate picture in Maya and its renders, the easier it's going to be to composite together. And then you just kind of tweak it until you get the right results. All right, but it's not, and it's actually not too bad. I might want to increase my specularity just a little bit more. I like the bump map. I think it looks really nice. Uh, you know, you never know. Let's grab some curves. I always like using curves. Um, maybe I can increase the intensity here of my, just kind of do an S curve, which increases the contrast. So now I'm getting this really interesting, uh, at least I'm getting a stronger contrast. So this is without it and this is with it. So I'm, I'm actually a lot happier with that than I was earlier. So there's a lot, little things I could tweak in the shader, but at least now it's looking a lot stronger. Cool. Uh, moving on, let's see, what are we missing? Ooh, let's see, we got shadows, we have reflections. Let's bring back the shadows actually. Oh boy, let's go to our effects and calm that down a little bit. Maybe I can click a reset and I'm gonna decrease my intensity here. Something like that. Cool. All right, let's grab reflections. Let's bring it on top. So again, you just kind of mess around with this. Is it add? Is it lighten? Is it overlay? Kind of like overlay. I'm gonna again, you know, just we just need a a hint of this reflections. This is our environment reflecting reflecting. You can see that it works really well in the wheels. And therefore we get a nice result. So in general, um, hopefully that gives you an idea of how to composite. I could definitely push this a lot further in Maya as well as in After Effects. Um, we took a lot of elements and we brought them in together to create something really, really unique and almost identical. So there's things that I could fix for sure. For example, the model itself could use a little more love. Uh, the shader could use more love. Um, a little bit more red on the side to match this area here. And um, maybe my occlusion on the floor is a little strong. So I might go in here and just kind of calm it down a little bit more. And uh, the floor itself, maybe I can calm that down too, just a tiny bit. So it's a little bit more uh, transparent and not so solid. And there's a couple of other things I could tweak. I'm actually pretty happy with the results, um, with the, at least with the results that I got from what I was given or what I made with you guys. But, uh, oh wait, I forgot a big one. I'm like, why does it look so bright down here? That's because I forgot my car occlusion, one of the most important ones. Let's bring that puppy in. Let's go to multiply. Where is it? I know you're here somewhere. There you are. All right, I love contact shadows and reduce. It's a little reflective here. I guess it's here too, so I guess that's normal. Um, but now at least I got my contact shadows back, so that's good. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully this gives you enough information to be able to composite your items together. So thank you very much, everybody. Again, you can find me at Facebook and also at academicphoenixplus.com. It'd be amazing if you guys could do a like and subscribe. And I guess I will see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Take care.